Basically, the United States has done one thing over and over again, very, very well mm. since the end of World War II that has led to us being a superpower. And what we have done is we have made other countries dependent on us. That's all we've done. It's right. that simple, man. It's that simple. Well, it's because we have the dollar. No. I wouldn't give that credit to the CIA. <laughs> no, it's not because of the dollar. It's because- It is. We can print the money and it's we are the reserve currency. And we took it. We kept everybody's gold too. What does everybody pay us in? They pay us in dollar. Foreign currency and gold. Right. They don't pay us in dollars. Why do you think the United States doesn't take payment in dollars? Because there are dollars. Because the dollars are worthless. Right. It's- So it's not because of the American dollar that we're powerful. We're powerful because coming out of World War II, how many- Japanese and uh, and and Nazi bombs happened in the United States. None. We weren't destroyed. Right. Our economic capacity was maxed. Of course, yeah. we actually got women into the workforce for the first time ever. Absolutely. But what was it like in the UK and France and Germany? Decimated. Decimated. What was it like in Japan? Decimated. Right. So who became the the contractor of the world? We did. Right. So what an idealist like me, you're totally right. What, what an idealist would say is, wow, there's a real chance here because I believe America is good. Like, like fundamentally, if you just look at how far uh, standards of living, race relations, dude, rights, like we're the best. There was a chance for us to be like, okay, no more, uh, no more bully. We have a huge surplus um, we rebuilt Europe. We could have given it back to Europe. You know, we gave it back to the Japanese. Uh, communism will burn itself out on its own. Why do we need to kill 2 million Vietnamese people? Literally, they got out of Saigon in 75. By 1989, Nike is there and they're sewing soccer balls. Like systems that don't work, the market will flesh out. We don't need, in my opinion, or what people and I'm going to explain why this pertains to the CIA, because all of these quasi militaristic interventions around the world to fight back then it was communism. Then it was, uh, you know, Islam, right? Radical Islam. And now it's something else. Now it's Putin. It's uh, it all starts with, you know, covert CIA, I would seem. They're do on the boots on the ground, putting the disinformation in you know, causing up, stirring up rebellion. And then it falls just like 53 Iran, the revolution, and it's been up ever since. And now we've got this uh, incredibly radical foe in Iran when you had a democracy. So what's, uh, do you know what I mean? So that's why that, that would be the, that's the criticism of that kind of aggression by the CIA that I mean by that. And there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of incorrect statements that lead to the conclusions that you just made, right? Okay. So let me just start. You said less than a few minutes ago, we're the best. And then you also said America's fundamentally good. Yeah. Best and good are two different things. You were like, we rebuilt Europe. We, we had the potential to say no more bullies. Mm -hmm. By rebuilding Europe, we were just becoming the new bully. That's what the United, that's the whole U.S. secret sauce. We are the bully. We are the bully. 